Welcome traders to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, we're going to be getting started here in just about 30 seconds. Uh, just before I get going, just want to do a quick audio and visual check if you can hear me and you can see my screen. If you could just type a Y in the chat box so that I know uh, we're good to get going. A Y in the chat box if you can hear me and you can see my screen, please. Okay, that's 2 p.m. UK time, and we are going to, uh, to get going here. Um, <clears throat> before we jump into today's discussion, I just want to take a minute to uh, review the disclaimer. Most importantly, uh, with respect to today's presentation, is the uh, part here with respect to the views that I express are solely mine, and uh, are not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. For those that are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Um, as I say, my name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology business. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading, day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what would become losing positions, giving back all my gains, and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. So this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience as an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I had to not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the market in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading, uh, being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose the emotional investments and that hellish emo emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. Or, and so I'm no longer concerned really with the outcome of individual trades or a small string of trades. My focus on the next hundred trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. From 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in some other uh, market orientated projects. I am a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill, providing uh, an in-depth daily market outlook in which I break down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setups for two to three markets that I'm actively tracking. I also run Tickmill's rapidly expanding the mini strategy group where I provide a daily specific trade plan with intraday trade updates. Since its inception in April, I've delivered over 1,100 points in profits. 
Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. With respect to the, uh, the Technical E-mini Strategy Group, we are actually uh, offering a trial uh, for the, whoops, don't know what happened there. We lost that, uh, that link, bear with me guys. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to, uh, let me see if I can get that link from another page here. Bear with me. It's, uh, it's not going to let me uh, do that at the moment. Um, I will, if anyone is interested, uh, post the link at the end of the session. Also, with respect to uh, the charts we're going to walk through now, if you, um, if you have any questions or you want me to take a look at a chart that I don't cover in my presentation, uh, if you just wait till the end and I'll open up a, a Q&A session and give you a chance to, uh, to ask any questions with respect to uh, any of the charts. So we're going to start by looking at the dollar index. Obviously, it's month end and quarter end uh, today. And uh, Citibank, whose quant desks uh, follow uh, month end rebalancing flows, suggests that there's a large uh, net US dollar buying need, uh, which is basically uh, allowing for uh, hedge rebalancing uh, for portfolio managers. So what I would anticipate today, certainly as we head into the 4 p.m. UK time, 4 p.m. London fix, is we could see a bit of volatility in terms of the dollar and, uh, and some of these dollar majors. But we've traded up into now this uh, projected ascending trend line resistance using the midpoint of the uh, pitchfork here. We've exceeded the equality objective. We've taken out yearly pivot, but I'm watching for potential for a pullback here in the dollar. Um, not necessarily going to see a, a full reversal at the moment, but what I would anticipate is we get something like this, you know, three wave corrective move uh, <coughs> before getting another extension to the upside. The reason why I sense we're going to see another high here is because we haven't got any divergence with respect to our momentum studies at this point. So what that means is that corrections from these current levels, uh, certainly in three swings, uh, can be bought, and then we can target the next leg to the upside. Certainly we'd be thinking about this prior peak over here, and it's also coincides with 38.2% retracement of the entire decline. And, uh, and this zone is gonna be an area uh, where I'll be paying close attention. But for now, I'm looking for a pullback into uh, to test this prior ascending, uh, sorry, descending trend line resistance as support. Uh, so anything into this 93 area would be an opportunity to uh, set long positions, looking for that next leg of upside. And then from there, as long as we have some momentum divergence in play, we could see a more meaningful corrective phase develop. But for now, the, uh, the dollar, due to the fact we don't have any divergence at this point, um, I'm expecting further upside in the dollar index. That obviously then feeds into the euro dollar. The euro dollar traded through its, uh, its extension target, the 100% extension versus this swing structure here from 122.70. 116.28 was the 100% um, extension. We also had these prior lows here. Uh, 116 handle, we traded through the 116. And again, just pay close attention to that four o'clock time today as, uh, as price action could get a little whippy. But ultimately, on the basis that we don't have any divergence here, so the momentum studies are, is making new lows as, uh, as we're making new lows in price, then again, similarly to the, uh, the dollar index, what we'd anticipate here is that any, uh, any corrective move, certainly again, thinking in terms of three wave correction into uh, 117.15, we've got descending uh, trend pitchfork. Three wave pattern then I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns and looking then for another 
extension to the downside, uh, likely targeting a move to test that 114.50 area. And then from there, we may see, uh, well, we could start the next leg to the upside in terms of the euro, as we are still in a bullish sequence overall, but uh, certainly see a bit of a correction here. So um, watching for any pullback in three waves to set short positions, looking for new lows, and ideally we get a test down here of this um, 114.90 area as, uh, as the next leg to the downside, and potentially 114.29, where we have that next extension target. Sterling, Let's check in here. <coughs> so Sterling now has a downside objective here versus this swing structure. Let me just draw this in for you so you can see exactly what it is I'm talking about. So we have our A, B, and then a C target down here now, 133.30. So I'll be paying close attention to how price responds here. Um, ideally, what we'd get is a pullback first in to test this uh, prior support zone at 136 as resistance, and then get that extension to the downside with uh, then looking for some momentum divergence to be, <coughs> to be in play to set long positions from there. And certainly then we could think about a test of the uh, 136.50 to the upside. So looking for a corrective move back into the 136 initially to fail, and then new lows, 133.30 is the uh, pivotal quality objective to the downside. And then from there, we'll be looking for momentum divergence. So new low in price, but no new low in the momentum study would be an opportunity then on the long side. So we've got, uh, let's take a look at the dollar yen. Bear with me, that's my dog in the background. <laughs> um, Trend line resistance. This was uh, the sort of trade we had on uh, a week or two ago now on the long side here in terms of the dollar yen. And I'm looking for this test of um, 112.30 to find some resistance. But again, in, in line with that broader dollar dynamic, any pullback at this stage, certainly to this 110.80, would be an opportunity to get in on the long side. And ultimately, I'd look now for an extension up into this 113. 07, and that's the swing target of um, this A, B, C objective. So 113.07 is going to be the pivotal test. And ideally, once we get up into that area, we'll have some momentum divergence in play. But for now, momentum has just broken above the trend line resistance. And so this suggests that any failure at the 112.30 uh, to 112.50 is going to be a corrective move, and then we should look to uh, re-engage on the long side, ultimately looking for a move up to test that 113.07. Let's take a look at the Aussie. So we're looking now um, in the Aussie here, whilst we hold, whilst we get any pullbacks that uh, move in to test this uh, 72 handle, we look for failure there, and, uh, and ultimately we're looking for new lows here in the Aussie. And what I'd really like to see is this yearly pivot get tested. And then from there, we might be able to mount a more meaningful correction in terms of the Aussie. So pullbacks into the 72 area, uh, 72, 80, 73 area, uh, watch for bearish reversal patterns, set short positions, targeting a move down to this uh, 69.90, which is the next downside objective for the Aussie. And let's just take a look at the Kiwi as well, because that obviously is, uh, is under pressure. We have uh, the take, we didn't get the upside break that we were looking for, trading back through the trend line. So whilst, uh, whilst that's in play, we look for a retest of the 68 handle, which was the equality objective, the, a, the C target, which we traded to the pip last time and then got that really nice bounce. But, uh, we found weakness here in, in, in line with the broader uh, dollar strength that we're seeing. Now, if we take out this 68 level, uh, we will have a new downside target because what we'll be looking at then will be this swing measured using these, uh, these areas. So this is what we, Elliott Wave uh, 
fanatics would probably refer to as uh, WXY, but uh, I just, in terms of these sessions, I like to keep it nice and simple and we just uh, use the swing structures for these targets. And so we can see here, if we take out the 68 handle in the Kiwi, that gives us a downside objective then at the 65 handle, and we're back into these prior lows here, support structure. So what we'd be looking for would be uh, potential to get into test this uh, the 68, probably see some profit taking there, but then we look for three wave corrective moves to fail and then look for that next leg to the downside to get us into that 65 before we can see a more meaningful reversal in terms of the Kiwi. So watch for potential double bottom here that uh, that'll attract some attention and then look for a three way corrective move to fail. And, uh, and then we're looking for that extension to the downside to test that 65 handle uh, once we take out these, uh, these prior lows at the 68. Let's check in with some of these other major markets. Let's look at uh, S&P 500s. So um, we, have a, we had a potential corrective low in place here in terms of the S&P. Let me just remove that for now. Um, we're looking for this third wave. Uh, we're looking for a fourth wave low to trade to the upside. Now, as I stated last week, ideally what we'd like to see is this uh, next leg of downside complete into the October time window. Uh, and then that sets up the end of year rally uh, that we often see. So whilst we hold, uh, so hold 44.87, so this is our, our suggested B target, we then have a downside objective Let's draw this in. So we look for an extension into 42.53, which is the equality objective. Just below there, we have a couple of S3 pivots and, uh, and these pro highs. So anything into this 42.30 to 42.50 area is where I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns, set long positions, and then we'd be actually be looking for uh, the market to extend higher and take out these prior highs uh, in, an, in, a in a run up into year end, basically, and into, uh, into the holiday season. So um, the alternative scenario with this now is that we do a double correction here. Let me just map that out for you so you can see exactly what I mean. So if we hold, second, that's all that. So if we hold, the current swing low, which at this stage looks less likely, less probable, sorry. Um, it could be then that we run up and make a, a really deep corrective move here. Let's just draw this in here. Before getting that next leg of downside. Again, what we're looking for is an equality objective. So if this pattern plays out, we'll be measuring this swing here as our downside objective versus that high there. If, uh, if this is the scenario, if this is the second scenario. The preferred scenario at this stage is that we take out these lows and we head uh, to our downside of quality objective versus the swing structure that's already in place here. So ideally what we're going to see is the lows taken out and then we trade down into that 4238 uh, downside objective. Uh, Frida, I, I can see you've got your hand up. If you have, if you if you've got a question, just make a note of it, and I'm going to open up uh, the Q and A session at the end, and uh, that will allow uh, allow everyone to uh, to chime in with any questions. Thank you, Etienne. Uh, appreciate your uh, your comments. Um, so yeah, we're looking for forty two thirty eight in terms of the S and P, uh, and and obviously that feeds into these other equity markets, the Nasdaq here. Was the, was the leader in terms of our performance and strength, but we're actually seeing uh, this uh, the NASDAQ rolling over here. It's already taken out its initial swing lows. So again, what does that tell us? What, well, what's the, the actionable information from that is that we now have an A and a B high. So we're looking for a C wave extension now to the downside. And again, that's gonna bring an opportunity for uh, long positions so ideally something like this plays out and we get into this target zone so 14,000 
538 is the equality objective. And then uh, just below there, we've got that ascending trend line support coming in, 40,300. So we look for uh, bullish reversal patterns there, so long positions looking for new all-time highs in terms of the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the Nikkei. Nikkei, we're looking for a test here at 29,097, which is the equality objective versus this swing high at 30,444. And then again, from there, we would be looking for uh, bullish reversal patterns. We check back, check that trend line resistance uh, that we broke out of. So this is an impulsive move. You can see we didn't get any divergence on this high. So on the basis we didn't get any divergence, what's the tradable information from that? Well, it, it suggests that it's highly probable that any pullback here is corrective and we should be on the lookout for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions looking for a breakout to the top size. And um, I think we'll see on that next high, do we, get, uh, do we get divergence? And if so, then that will be an opportunity to trade for a more meaningful corrective phase. But for now, we're looking for long positions uh, in the Nikkei. Let's check in with some of these metals here. Gold, still rolling over. Uh, didn't find support at the 1744. So the next area of interest now in terms of this, uh, this pullback in gold here will be any move now into, so if we can get down into this area, we see a bounce. We use the trend line here as our resistance point. And then again, what we're actually looking for then will be this uh, 1520 target, which is the quality objective versus that 119 high. And I'll just draw that in for you so you can see exactly what, what I'm talking about. So it's that swing structure there that we're watching. And um, so any initial profit taking that we see into this support zone, watch for pullbacks into the trend line resistance to bearish reversal patterns, so short positions, looking then for that test of 1520 as the equality objective. Crude oil. So we got that little pullback into the trend line, testing the trend line from above. Obviously, it held and we've extended to the upside. What we want to pay close attention to here in terms of crude, though, and, uh, and this is important, we have a potential double top here, and, uh, and that comes with momentum divergence. So what we could now see in terms of crude, let's, let's get this in here. So this, uh, you can see a three wave into here, bullish reversal pattern to target that fifth wave objective to the upside. But most notably, what I would say, let's just change this, adjust the trend line to there, and that there. So that's gonna be this, this is gonna be the key zone for crude. If we hold 67.40, 67.50, then uh, again, there's an opportunity there with a bullish reversal pattern, such long positions targeting this uh, 80.30 to 81.15 area versus our wave four low. Minimum upside or, or fifth wave objective is that 127 extension of the fourth wave uh, corrective phase. So uh, that's the story in crude there. But what I would say, and, uh, and this is important, if we, um, if we take out this trend line support on a closing basis, that could be a bit of a, uh, a concern for crude because like I say, in terms of tradable information or, uh, or you know, playing the probabilities, this divergence is, uh, is a little bit ominous for crude there. So uh, we really want to make sure if we do get this pullback that we see that the bullish reversal patterns before jumping in, don't, I don't suggest just uh, blindly buying or selling trend lines. Copper, Dr. Copper, as they say. Um, following the, uh, the analysis really from, uh, from last week, we're looking for that extension down into the 3.8552 zone now. 
And then we could see a more meaningful low in place in terms of copper. And then we'd be looking for upside extension. And you can see uh, copper, you know, trades really as a risk asset. And this, what I'd ideally like to see is copper testing this area as the S&P tests its pullback point. So we're looking for these corrections to tie up and complete together before we get this next potential leg higher in terms of, uh, in terms of risk assets. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin held, has held the support, it was a little bit shaky there, but has held. We, uh, for me to, to re-engage this on the long side, I want to see a break of the trend line resistance here on the closing basis. And then we can be starting to think about the next leg of upside in terms of Bitcoin. But really what I, an, an ideal scenario would be that we trade down into this major trend line support, and then we look for the bullish reversal patterns and we target the top side of the channel here up to uh, 76,700. Ether holding its trend channel support. As it does so, we wait now for a break of trend line resistance. as an opportunity then to deploy long positions looking for 4678 on the upside, the 127 extension of this, uh, of this consolidation zone. Some of the other trades we've had on recently, Singapore dollar, got that lovely pullback into the projected uh, pitchfork support area and uh, got in on the long side on the closing break of the trend line there. And that trade uh, has moved nicely. Uh, we've also we had the dollar yen, we have the, uh, the dollar yuan run up uh, 230 pips on, on this trade. And I think what I ideally what we'd like to see is another just corrective move here to set the, the final base, I think then, for, uh, for the more meaningful extension to the upside. And uh, I'm looking for higher prices there in terms of the dollar yuan. And also yen, had this one on, uh, worked, uh, worked pretty nicely. Backed up 94 pips off that. Um, it's rolling over a, bit, a little bit now, obviously being weighed by the Aussie itself and the weakness and those cross dynamics are, uh, are leading to a bit, uh, a bit of weakness now in the Aussie yen. Um, it's gonna be, see how these equity markets um, shake up because the Aussie yen more often than not trades in tandem uh, with these equity markets. And so if we are gonna see another leg of downside in terms of equities, then what we'd be expecting in the Aussie yen is actually another extension to the downside there um, would give us a target down at 74.28 on the downside. So keep you a close eye on how the equity markets trade with respect to uh, how we're looking to play uh, the Aussie yen next. The Aussie CAD has broken, uh, it's broken its support there. So that, again, that trade didn't get validated. We didn't get the bullish reversal patterns that we were looking for last week. And, uh, and we're starting to roll over a bit there. Another one that's pretty interesting as well is this Kiwi CAD. It's sitting right at a, uh, a major trend line support zone. And so what I'm watching for here is uh, looking for bullish reversal patterns in this area. So a key day reversal pattern is, uh, is what I'm looking at. Then, uh, then we can think about long positions and certainly uh, targeting a move up into the midpoint of the channel here would be the upside objective. But <laughs> if we don't get a bullish reversal pattern here and we get a close below the trend line support, then the downside objective becomes the equality versus this swing structure here. So from that low into this high, that gives us a move down to 83.15 in, uh, in terms of the Kiwi CAD. So those are uh, the, the other position I've had on, which worked nicely, was this um, Aussie Kiwi. Talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We had this uh, big equality objective test at the 103.20, the projected tr trend channel support. And we importantly, we got that reversal through the trend line resistance, and this one's run up quite nicely. What I'd be looking for now with this uh, Aussie Kiwi is an extension like this. So any pullbacks, once we test this resistance zone at 105.30s, any three-wave corrective pullbacks will be another opportunity to get in on the long side here, and certainly thinking about trend line resistance coming in 106. So uh, that's... It gives you an overview of, uh, of some of the key levels I'm watching, some of the key opportunities. 
certainly in terms of trading uh, for me today, I, what I really like to see is get that London fix out of the way, get this uh, short term uh, volatility in some of these pairs off the table and then look at uh, redeploying capital after uh, after we get this quarter end out of the way. So with that said, uh, I can open this up for uh, questions. If you have a chart you'd like me to take a look at, you can type it into the box and I'll, uh, I'll take a quick look at the chat box there. Um, and let me just get this link for you for the futures group where you can join me uh, every day where I post a trade plan. I give intraday trade updates and uh, alerts. And like I say, this, uh, this group has, uh, has run up over 1,000, 1,100 points since April. And uh, you're more than welcome to join me in there on a daily basis, where, like I say, I'll share the uh, trade, a daily trade plan with you and intraday alerts. Um, questions? Frida, you have a question. If you want to type it into the chat box. Can you show me? Uh, I don't know what an S90 crossover is. Um, you asked me this last week and I, 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 I don't know. I, it's not a strategy I'm familiar with. Sorry about that. <laughs> Any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, if you could type an N in the chat box, that's also helpful, as then I know that we're all on the same page and I've done a reasonable job of, uh, of explaining my, my perspective on the markets. Okay, I'm going to uh, take the silence as, uh, as a no for questions. Uh, thanks everyone for joining me this week. Uh, like I say, please feel free to join me uh, in the strategy group. Uh, Julius, you have a question? Thanks, Frida. Do you want to type the question into the chat box, Julius? Uh, can you see the, the link? Let me just see. That link there, Julius, if you click on the link that I just posted, uh, the Facebook group there, and you can request membership to the group and, uh, and we can get that set up for you. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this session up here. Please uh, feel free to join me next week. Hi, sorry. My first time in the webinar, can I download? Yeah, uh, there will be a recording um, posted tomorrow, Leroy. Um, normally I post it uh, Friday mid-morning, lunchtime. So uh, don't worry about that. That'll be posted to the Tickmill blog. And it, you can also get it on my LinkedIn page. I'll, uh, I'll just share that. I'll share my LinkedIn with you, so you can uh, you can follow me on there. I post uh, most of my charts, etc. Let's see. There we go. For those who want to uh, to follow along, like I say, I post uh, daily updates there. Okay, thanks very much, everyone. I hope you found this session helpful and we'll reconvene at the same time next week. All the best.